Hello and welcome to Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris, your host. As you perhaps know by now, this is a program that addresses your questions about life after searching the Bible for godly solutions. It is utterly amazing what the Bible has to say about life's many issues. And to prove it, I've invited a panel of local ministers to address the questions that have been sent in by our viewing audience. And I'd like you to meet the panel now. First up, we have Pastor Michael Wyckoff of Joy Harvest Fellowship here in Lima, Ohio. Next, Pastor Brandon Green of the Calvary Chapel of Praise, also here in Lima, followed by Reverend Jeremy Mann of Emmanuel United Church of Christ in Bluffton, Ohio. Rounding off the panel is Pastor Michael Lyons of In Faith Ministries, also here in Lima. Gentlemen, happy to have you back. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you to have. All right. Now, I, I think it'd be great to start with a question that we got from a wife. She's quite frustrated because she believes in the principle that the man should be the head of the household and should take that leadership role. Mm -hmm. But when she speaks to her husband about doing that, he gets angry. Yeah. He didn't want to do it. He's, yeah. I guess he's taking a look at the leadership role and says, I don't want it. <laughs> right. As some men do. Some men do need to be encouraged to take sure. up that leadership right. role. And I'm not speaking of being uh, a male chauvinist or that kind of thing, but just taking leadership role in the house. How do you work with that man and that woman, if they're in your parish, mm -hmm. in your congregation, how do you work with them and encourage that man to take that leadership role? How do you go about that? I would um, start by saying if her husband is refusing to lead the family, you just can't stop leading the family. She's got to pick up the slack with God's help. But in the same time, she can't uh, come from a place of resentment she's going to have to lean on her husband, you know, the Lord himself. And that in this, she can't also emasculate him as well. And so there's a delicate balance there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like women do a great job in, in general of, you know, teaching our kids, uh, you know, the Bible, praying. And sometimes she'll, she'll need to speak up and encourage him to do that. But the one thing that I, I like about 1 Peter 3, 1, it says this, in the same way wives submit to your husbands so that even if some of them do not believe the word they will be won over by your conduct without you saying anything mm -hmm. and i think um it, it's all about the attitude of the heart and if she's nagging him you know he's going to just continue to maybe be rebellious i don't know where this is coming from uh, you know maybe you just be passive uh, but if she could help um, draw it out of him i need you to pray for me I, our kids need to hear you bless them. Our kids need to hear from you, Dad, you know, and continue to foster in that way so it's not coming across uh, abrasive and overbearing. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Anybody else on that? Well, I mean, it, the, the question I was, I was wondering, first of all, was we're coming from a point that both were believers and, and that they're both uh, mm -hmm. safe in, in, in church. And, and obviously that counsel obviously works really well if they're both believers and, and, and that's that's a good thing that's to say because you can now speak to the man and he can he can embrace some of that conversation mm -hmm. of understanding the stewardship uh, when you bring a, a biblical principle to them and you can bring them together with that in mind uh, but now if, if sometimes they're unequally yoked that becomes even tougher it does uh, mm -hmm. if, if she is um, serving and loving the Lord and and he's still trying to find his way uh, to that place that that makes it a little bit more tougher but in either event I, I do believe it's important that the wife understands uh, her even though she has the knowledge mm -hmm. of knowing that this is what the house needs to be built on uh, some of your leadership I'm still going to function with the wisdom of knowing how to submit and honor you mm -hmm. as you get there mm -hmm. so I believe in her obedience to just kind of still uh, be faithful to the things of God, yeah. uh, submit and honor her husband. It allow her witness to uh, lends, lends itself to uh, opportunities to, to plant those seeds mm -hmm. of how she would like for him to continue to step up. So okay. very important that, that we, that the wives always keep that proper honor in place. And, and, and knowing that, you know, find his strong suits, celebrate those. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and in doing so, that she'll find out that uh, even though he may seem a little bit uh, less uh, strong in some areas, he's, he has areas that's stronger. And so mm -hmm. uh, elevate those 
and, and yeah. make sure that he's able to see that and know that you know that they're there to uh, complete, not not compete, and, <laughs> and it will strengthen him. Yeah. 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 Well, what do you what do you do in terms of um, discipleship for for husbands in terms of teaching them to be uh, better leaders in the home? How do you build a platform to tr attract men to that? Well, I think one of the one of the first things we need to recognize is that we are all men sitting at this table <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have wives that we mm -hmm. uh, want to encourage as well. Um, but I, I think there's a mutuality in, in relationship and there's a communication element there. Um, we celebrate in the church all the time that there are many gifts and many talents that we have mm -hmm. and we're encouraged to share those gifts and to share those talents. And I think it's a little it's a little uh, foolish maybe to think that all men were given leadership talents uh, and women were not. There are certainly female leaders mm. within the church, oh, yes. um, which any pastor would, would recognize and, and, and celebrate. <laughs> um, so I think it's, it's that encouragement element, you know, finding those elements where this, this individual, this husband has strengths and encouraging those mm -hmm. and highlighting mm -hmm. those um, and pointing out that, you know, not where you're failing, but rather where you're succeeding. Right. Uh, and how you train that up uh, with regards to discipleship and as a pastor, I think, is to encourage that element of communication. Um, yes. Not to bring in a whole nother topic, but <laughs> divorce rates are up. We could talk about that. I think one of the reasons is that communication in couples is breaking down mm -hmm. uh, and openness and honesty and all those elements that, uh, you know, you do find in, in Scripture that encourages communication because the passage that you brought up, the passage from Ephesians says something similar, mm -hmm. uh, wives be subject to your husbands. But when you continue to read, it says also that those husbands are to treat their wives <laughs> right. well. It's, That's this, it's right. mutuality yeah. it's, yeah. and not right. just a top-down system. Mm -hmm. Right. Very well put. I, I would just add one other thing. Um, and I think those were excellent. You know, the, the love, you've heard of the love and respect series, uh, you know, well, Ephesians 5.33, husbands love your wives, That's wives awesome. respect your yeah. husbands. And yeah. I think yeah. respect is big. Yeah. And the more uh, the wives will do that, the more the husbands kind of wake up. Um, but the big thing also is, is prayer. You know, one of the things that um, I have mm -hmm. found in my life to be so effective with my spouse, with myself, uh, with my kids, is to pray this prayer that Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter mm -hmm. 1. Oh, yeah. And I'm not going to recite the whole prayer in the interest <laughs> of time. But basically, give you know, wisdom and revelation and the knowledge. Yes. Of, mm -hmm. This is the Holy Spirit prayer. So it is mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit prayer. And, it, I, you know, of all prayers, if I say, what's the most successful aspect of your prayer life, Pastor? It, it, it's praying that prayer. Mm -hmm. It's a Holy Spirit prayer. And I found that almost instantly people that I aim that toward are all of a sudden interested in the things of the Lord or you know, come up and ask you a question. Good, yeah. So wives, pray for those husbands that they may know the hope of their, you mm -hmm. know, your calling, the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints, the exceeding greatness of your power. So pray, wives. Excellent. And if you want to see your husband <laughs> shut down real quick, undermine him in front of his children. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it goes back to what you said, it's respect. Uh, as men, we don't need the words of affirmation as I love you like your wives do. Right. We need to hear I respect you. Right. And so if you want to pull that out of him, yep. continue to champion that in him and continue to remind him who he is, not who he's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well Excellent. said. You know, th uh, we seem to have gotten some very good questions here about family and I want to continue with another. Um, this one saying, I struggle with anger mm -hmm. and I yeah. want to be more Christ-like. Yeah. How do we deal with anger? Particularly when you look at the fact that the Bible tells us to be angry and sin not. So mm -hmm. there's certain instances <laughs> where anger is allowed, mm -hmm. right. where yes. indeed it should even be shown perhaps, right. but sure. sin not in the process. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one of the, uh, you know, you have the fruit of the spirit and then the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as one who in the past and even sometimes in the present <laughs> might be given to anger. I can probably speak a little bit to this. But you know, if you analyze anger, a lot of it's based on fear, a false uh -huh. f fear of something mm -hmm. and you get angry. Mm -hmm. If it's money, fear of lack, okay? Mm -hmm. And the wife goes out and spends something or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You get angry. Mm -hmm. So anger is, um, you know, a, a contrary to what we're urged in the Bible to do is that's to fear not fear not. And I think that was the first place to check. 
Um, there's, I'm sure there's a ton of advice that, that we can give on fear, but it's really wrong thinking. It really, you know, you, you are believing a lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anger, much anger is based on lies, believing a lie. When you believe mm -hmm. a lie, you empower the liar, the devil. Right. Luke 6.45 says that a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Right. Our heart is a mm -hmm. container, and uh, I believe the question said something about quick to be angry. Mm -hmm. um, anger is a secondary emotion. It's not a primary emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, the primary emotion is grief. And so what I would encourage you to do, if you have a pattern, I'm, we're, we're talking about right. pattern, we're not talking about isolated instances, mm -hmm. right. but if you have a pattern of anger, perhaps maybe it's time to seek um, out pastoral counsel or talk to a Christian therapist and explore what is it in here that wasn't healed? What is it that's wounded? Get that stuff out of there because it's sitting within the container of your heart and it just ha finds a way to just spill out. Mm -hmm. And as you get those things out of there, get mm -hmm. them healed, you'll find that you won't be so quick to be angry any longer. Mm. Yeah. Very, good. Yeah. Very good. I think, you know, you, you touched on anger and, and a root of it can maybe stemming from fear. I think another place that anger uh, finds this birthing place is an individual who's pretty strong in pride. Mm. Uh, generally, if there's something that you're willing to get so angry about, it's something that somehow you feel you have a, a, a leg up on it, or somebody's disappointed you, or let you down, or mishandled something that you mm. uh, tend to think needs to be at another place, mm -hmm. and um, you know, disappointed you and where you are, or what you've expected. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we can probably coach someone to try to work on your place of humility and being humble. You get low. And the lower you get, the less angry you'll get. And so if we can get an individual to focus on them being low, so when anything's happening, you're not nearly as mm -hmm. frustrated mm -hmm. to a place of anger or disappointment. Mm -hmm. So if you can focus on getting yourself a little bit low, le mm -hmm. thinking less of who you are and how you perceive any moment, Mm -hmm. um, you'll find yourself being less angry. Mm -hmm. Did you want to add to that at all? Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, in, in Scripture, we talked about this a little before, but Scripture, uh, you know, you find that even Jesus was angry at mm -hmm. times. Uh, yeah. There is an anger that comes out, and it's, we call it righteous anger. Yeah. Yeah. And right. we make that differentiation uh -huh. um, that when you're applying anger to the situation, whether it's yourself or you're witnessing it from others, um, to try to make that differentiation between am I, is this anger coming from a place that is self, yeah. uh, self involved or that it's selfish or is it a selfless mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. of anger? Mm -hmm. uh, and that it is okay to be angry. And, and one thing we haven't said maybe yet is that it's okay to be angry at God too. Look at the scripture examples of all these different people Psalms. that people were pretty upset with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and God responded with that and said, you know what, I still love you. And I think sure. it's okay to recognize that that love mm -hmm. uh, is always the constant, uh, even in anger. But I'll say it was really important because it was very cathartic for the psalmist to get oh, it out yes. there yes. so that we could speak it. Uh, we can say, you know, I've got some unmet expectations, I feel mm -hmm. I w I'm let mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. so I'm disillusioned, now I'm depressed, now I'm discouraged, and all these things that, you know, if you will get them out on the table before the Lord, the Lord can come and comfort them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can't do anything with an angry person. Mm -hmm. you got to get those things out so that God can bring healing to the grief. Well, and, and I'll say this in the last, the last thing that the the question was asked, I want to be more like Christ. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and if you're trying to, uh, and, and that's where that humility come in. He's let, let this mind be in you, which is also yes. Christ Jesus. This is the mind of humility. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be less angry and you want to be more like Christ, that is nothing but a formula for humility. You want to get Absolutely. lower mm -hmm. and you'll move yourself more into the nature and the flow of Christ mm -hmm. and you'll be able to be less angry. Excellent. You know, we're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, I'd like to deal with another powerful issue, the issue of forgiveness. Yes. We'll take, that, that, we'll take up that issue in just a moment, right after the break. We'll be right back. Amen. 
don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and we're discussing some really good family and home life issues here today from the questions that we received from you and our audience. Uh, another question about uh, forgiveness. How do I deal in forgiveness? Um, and some people saying that, you know, well, you know, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How you, what, what about that whole issue of forgiveness? Mm. Yeah, I, wait, wait, before you answer that question. Yeah. One thing that always comes up is, yeah, but you don't know what they said. Yeah. You don't know what <laughs> they did. Yeah, right, you don't yeah, know right. what, how they made me right. feel. Very sure. true. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Well, you know, forgiveness is not a feeling. If you're waiting for the feeling, That's good. you're never going to forgive. Yeah. Forgiveness yeah. is a decision. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you make it, and after the decision, you may feel angry. You may feel resentful. But it's, it's just like anything else. You know, I decide to accept Christ. I decide to, we make decisions all the time when we don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. And um, so forgiveness is, a, I think a lot of people say, well, I will forgive when I feel like it. Mm -hmm. That'll never mm -hmm. uh, ever come. No. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by the way, it's a faith thing. Yes, it is. You know, you, you accept Christ by faith, <laughs> you forgive by faith. Yeah. And afterwards, you may still feel the feelings, but you have to say no devil. I'm sorry, it's the <laughs> thoughts from mm -hmm. outside yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are saying, look, look, what he did. Look what he. Mm -hmm. Look how he made me feel. Mm -hmm. Say, nope. I made the decision to forgive. That is the decision. I am sticking by it. And you resist the devil, he will flee. And after yeah. a while, those thoughts will decline. And there are things that happened to me decades ago. Okay, yeah. back then, very frequent, it would come back. And I say, nope. I made the decision. That's ha ha, right. Satan, That's go right. go your way and bother somebody else That's with right. this. <laughs> and then it will come less frequently, less frequently. But mm -hmm. then you know, every now and then, even today, mm -hmm. you know. Just a little <laughs> knock on the door, <laughs> knock on uh, my mind. No, 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 no. Yep. But the feeling will go, the bitterness will go away, but you first have to make the decision and take the step to do it by faith. And that's one thing you just brought up that we hadn't brought into the whole thing of forgiveness. Bitterness. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. bitterness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? How, how do we deal with forgiveness or unforgiveness? I find that... Um, as my brother said, that uh, forgiveness, you have to reconcile your faith and your feelings mm -hmm. in, the, in the process of that. But the concern I have as a pastor is if we don't deal with unforgiveness in our lives, it can not only lead to bitterness, but we can carry a rejected spirit. Mm -hmm. We can carry an orphan spirit. So then we can't even receive from God right. because we are, we're dealing with so many things. And if you consider we're not greater than our master, Jesus was rejected. He was despised. And if you think about the Word of God, one of the prophecies, about, a messianic prophecy about Jesus was he was wounded in the house of a friend. Mm -hmm. It's because our expectation is upon um, the greater the relationship, the greater the expectation, the greater the opportunity for somebody to let us down. And so if he can forgive us, we've got to forgive other people too. So he's modeled it before us and, you know, it is an act of your faith. Very good. You know, uh, some people feel that, uh, well, when it comes to certain sins, they have a right not to forgive. Mm -hmm. uh, adultery being one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you counsel somebody when they feel betrayed by their spouse uh, because of uh, an affair? And now you're being asked to forgive them. I, I think to a degree, and, and to kind of flip the question a little bit, sometimes we seek forgiveness in a form, as a form of permission. That if I am being forgiven for something, then I am allowing mm -hmm. that to be a thing. Mm -hmm. So for the person who's offering that forgiveness, it's difficult to give it because mm -hmm. I don't want to affirm what yeah. was done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's where we end up struggling. And, and yeah, I think it's, it's, an, it's something that you work at. It's something that you work mm -hmm. on and it's not something that happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone who says that they're quick to forgive 
but they don't necessarily forget, forget. is absolutely right because right. you aren't expected to forget yeah. that the wrong has transpired, mm -hmm. but that I am forgiving. And when we look at scripture and we talk about the, the Christ offering life to for forgiveness, for the purpose of forgiveness, yeah. Uh, that that forgiveness is something that's long lasting, but the betrayal is still something that we talk about every time we come up to Easter and we share that Easter story, that mm -hmm. there was still that element of betrayal yes. and we have not forgotten mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So I think, you know, when you talk about it and from that personal standpoint, you're talking about adultery. Yeah, it's, it, that's not something you're gonna ever forget. Um, and trying to find that forgiveness is gonna be a personal struggle, but understanding that there is a differentiation between the permission element and the forgiveness and the work that's being done internally mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to, to find that loving place um, again. I, I see God as a, as, a, as a role model here in the Old Testament. Uh, he, he had to forgive Israel for something they had done. Mm. Yes. And he said, I forgive you for my own sake. That's right. yeah, exactly. Isn't right. that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for right. my good. own sake. Right. Which lets us know that it's bitterness brutal. is not worth harboring and yeah. then if you do so it's to your own detriment could, right. could you speak to that well i could speak to that and I'll, I'll i'll give you two parts on that so absolutely well so god had to forgive us because he i want to love you and i can't love you like i want to love you and you have what i want you to have if i don't forgive you so when he said i forgive you for my own sake he said i I, you, you're, you're my, I, I want you to have my name. I want you to have the life that I have for you. So I'm going to have to forgive you in order for me to have the fulfillment out of your life that I've created you for. When I think about forgiveness and the forgetting, you have to understand the fact that uh, the reason I'm not forgiving is because I've been hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been wronged. I've got a pain. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to forget the forgiveness is to remove the pain. So even if I remember, forgiveness now should have already remedied the hurt of the pain. It's okay if I remember, as long as I'm not feeling the pain anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like a being cut. Um, y as long as I'm picking at the scab, I still have the pain. But once I've allowed the scab to begin to heal and to mend, I can look down and still see the scar, but I don't have the pain. So it, I remember when I got cut. I remember when that happened, but I don't have the pain anymore. And so I, I think what we have to do is understand when we're forgiving, it's okay. You can remember, but receive the gift, because that's what it is. It's a gift of forgiveness that removes you from the place of pain. And when you hold it, then you're not allowing yourself to receive the healing that comes with this wonderful gift mm -hmm. of forgiveness. A lot of times we, we hold ourselves into a place of yeah. something we've done. That's what I was going to get into. Yeah. Yeah. Lack of forgiveness of yourself. Something yeah. we've done. Yeah. And now we've held ourselves to a place that we don't even want to forgive ourselves. Yeah. And so we keep ourselves yeah. in that place of condemnation. Yeah. Yes. There yeah. are people uh, who have refused to go further in life simply because they forgive themselves for their past. And so we're yeah. stuck in that place of yeah. pain yeah. that of what I've done, how I've mishandled my kids, mishandled my wife, mishandled my life. Now I'm still stuck in that right. pain, that place, yes. mm -hmm. until I've allowed myself to receive the love of forgiveness that I have my own. I have the power to how, give myself. How do you forgive yourself? How do you, is there something you say to yourself? Is there something ritual you have to go yeah. through? How do you forgive yourself? It's well, coming into fellowship. Uh, that's what the table is all about, the communion table. <laughs> it's a beautiful reminder that uh, the reason we get to celebrate at the table is because Christ suffered uh, on account of me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That we, you know, the same night that he broke bread, he was betrayed. Mm -hmm. He had to deal with all of that. And so if he brings me to the table, he's saying, I, w I want a fellowship with you because I am invested in you, even though you are the reason while I was wounded. Mm -hmm. yeah. And who are you to not forgive yourself <laughs> if God forgave you? There yeah. You yeah. Who are you? Yeah. You know, I've, I've heard this through, the, like through the years that, um, what, eight out of 10, seven out of 10 of doctor visits uh, are not because they broke a leg, caught a cold or whatever, but it's bitterness, self-condemnation, mm. unforgiveness that they've mm -hmm. actually now 
clinically and in labs proven how bitterness mm -hmm. and, and unforgiveness actually causes the yeah. hypothalamus to secrete a, you know, something and it messes yeah. up something else, but it releases mm -hmm. cortisol, adrenaline, yeah. which we have when fight or flight happens, but when you're constantly stewing on bitterness and uh, stuff like that, you have a physical disease yeah. brewing yeah. in you. And I have, I, my best friend years ago told me his wife was going to the doctor for surgery after surgery after surgery. Mm. And on her 11th time, mm. the doctor told him, you know, it, it's people like your wife that keep me in business. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he said you mean to tell me my wife doesn't have to be? He said, no, if she would deal with that internal stuff. Yes. Yeah. Forgive God, yeah. forgive yourself, forgive others. I, you know, I've seen and heard many testimonies of people being physically healed after sure. they've forgiven. Isn't that something? I dealt with anxiety uh, for almost a whole year after my dad passed away, and the doctor said it was post-traumatic stress. Mm. And I had to realize this thing could either be a part of my life or I could allow the Lord to begin to heal what was going on subconsciously mm -hmm. within my heart. And so it was a decision to take the Word of God and confront the things that I believed internally that I needed to deal with. Some of it had to do with unforgiveness. Some of it had to do with fear. It was all fear-based, but mm -hmm. all of this was uh, an outward expression of what was going on within the heart. A lot of people that I've seen, you know, they're in panic attack. Uh, it's dealing with trying to control things. Well, you know, that, that's exhausting. Yes, and so they is. go to the emergency room, they get EKGs, and all of it results in, you really just need to deal with your heart. The heart of the matter is always the matter of the heart. The heart of the matter is always the matter of the heart. Very well put. Anybody else wanted to add to that? No. Well, no, yeah. no uh, I don't know. Please, go ahead. We have time. The one, the one thing that I found effective in myself and other people is to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. Mm -hmm. We hear that at weddings love endures long, <laughs> love is patient, love is kind. But you know, if you meditate on that and you keep meditating on that, we talk about how can I be more like Christ? There's no quicker way than to do that than for 30 days just for a half an hour, just meditate on 1 Corinthians chapter, the love chapter, sure. mm -hmm. ch sure. verses 4 through 8, especially the Amplified translation. Love endures long and is patient and kind. You know, you think, well, I'm not that. But you know, after, after about a week or two, you'll find out that you're responding like Jesus yeah. because you're meditating on it. And this is going from theology in your head and it's getting down mm -hmm. into your heart. That's what meditation of the Word of God will do. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll change you. Yeah. And it'll actually, your re reflexes will be Jesus reflexes instead of flesh reflexes. Yeah. So you're saying that, in, in essence, one of the ways of dealing with forgiveness, one of the ways of healing yourself or medicating yourself the is word. to meditate on Scripture. Yeah, yes. meditate on Scripture. Absolutely. You can be, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of the and that's heart something you've got to do. Flows the issues of yeah. life. Exactly. So if you can get it in your heart, it should be flowing right. in your yeah. life. Yeah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation yeah. of my <laughs> heart, heart yeah. be pleasing yeah. and acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Meditation is a very powerful thing, isn't it? It's yeah. very, powerful. Yeah, very powerful. And if you don't change the reel of what they did inside of here, yeah. you'll never get free. Mm -hmm. You've got to change that reel. You've got to get a new picture. Okay. Thank you very much for all out of time. Amazing that some people don't want to deal with meditation because they think about the religions of the East and not oh, understanding that it is, oh, yeah. it is biblical. Yeah. Quite biblical. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Meditated all the time. All the time. Yeah. Right. So all the time we have, we certainly appreciate the contributions that you have made here at this table. And we certainly hope that we have benefited you in our audience today and that God has healed you of some things that you may have been you know, dealing yeah, with. Yeah. Well, we'll be back again next week at the same time with another panel to discuss more issues. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 
100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.